we introduced Ryan Bishop, Operations Manager at Rose Integration, a precision machining company utilizing the Memex Merlin solution and 30 machines across their complete plant. The basis is we had a whiteboard and we put our hourly target, what our actual number was, and we took a picture of that twice a day. And one was in the, the end of afternoon shift, or the end of uh, morning shift and the end of afternoon shift. Somebody went and took a picture of each of those, then each of those pictures was entered into a spreadsheet, and then we did a manual calculation on our spreadsheet by entering the scrap off of another spreadsheet. And I had somebody full-time doing that every day just to understand if we were on track or not. So since we've had Memex installed, all the information is readily available now for us. Um, so some of the, the reports that come out of that. How, how many machines are you installed? It's uh, 30 machines that's installed right now. Uh, it's been running for approximately a year and a half, I think, that for that. Uh, so there's a lot of reporting features that come out of it automatically. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, non-conforming graphs that I can instantly print. It lets me know how many rejects I've had over the different months for different cells. Uh, you can customize each of, in, each of any of the reports, which is fantastic. They're very user-friendly. And with the multitude of reports, and there's probably a thousand different variations by customizing it the way that you need. Uh, some of the other stuff that we've been able to do over the last six months, especially, is being able to use the information there at a capacity plan for ourselves and know if our runtime is, is uh, where it needs to be. Um, with one of the main things that I've been able to do at Rose recently was I started to look at our our QA and setup time combined and realized of our running time, our QA and setup time was taking up 30 to 37% of all of our run time and we were only actually running 52% of the time. Uh, with analyzing that even further, I was able to make changes to taking the quality department from quality, putting them onto the floor, working one-on-one -on -one with the operator, getting the machines running and over the last four months we're now at 63% run time and QA and setup has dropped down to 22%. So a significant increase by being able to use the data gathered by Memex. Um, I've been able to also offload another, well, very close to offloading another manual input database, which is the non-conforming. Uh, so all of the operators enter their non-conforming in. With the new addition of the history editor, we can take jobs that are finished off the machine and go back and correct the errors that were made, or if we find non-conforming or if it gets rejected by the customer or if it gets dropped into burning, we can actually enter that against the job and then again on the one touch button you have all the information that you need rather than entering them into a, an Excel spreadsheet and, and trying to manipulate that data. Uh, so it's been fantastic. Um, we, I mean I can look at what the quoted cycle time was, what the actual cycle time is, uh, it tells me how much my cut time was, how much my setup time was, I can look at, um, I have reports that will allow us to look at a new job and once that it's run for the first time, print a report and tell me how much time did I have in setup for each of the sequences, how much time did I have in an inspection, compare that back to the quote to find out did we make money or not, where didn't we make money, go back to the customer, maybe it needs to be requoted, maybe we need to start targeting something before the next run comes up. Uh, so we need to take it to the next stage which is still being real time analyzing of data. Uh, that takes a little bit of commitment from the company to put the personnel in place to be able to do that. Uh, right now we are using it as more of a, a rear view mirror look. So we're looking at all of the previous day's data, but now we've driven it back from looking at, okay, well we lost money at the end of the month when we do our reports and trying to drive that back to now we're within 24 hours of not having something run good and start working on that data. And going forward, we want to have a team of people that can look at the data real time and then go attack the job while it's actually running. Uh, but we've had a significant increase. Um, I'd have to say in the last year and a half, we've gone from an average of probably 40% across the shop to last month we were at 82% OEE across the shop. So I have, yeah, I have one cell that's running very poor and one cell that's running extremely well. <laughs> so they average out. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's been a big impact to be able to analyze jobs, uh, take any of the data at any time, and you can pull up reports. I've been able to uh, watch the night shift without having to have a nighttime supervisor just by looking at reports. I can look at employees and their behavior during a shift to find out if they're taking too many breaks or if they're having difficulty or if they're walking away from their machine too many times because you can actually see, you know, second by second what's going on with the machines. Uh, we've been able to... Uh, resolve a lot of non-essential 
uh, walking around time, looking around time. So with Memex, we were able to determine that there was way too much time being spent in tooling, so we implemented a tool crib in person that delivers the tools. Uh, Memex we use uh, very effectively for what we call uh, serving the internal customer, and basically the operator has to stand in his machine, push a couple buttons, sends out an email, and somebody's going to come to them, whether that's QA help or needs a chip barrel removed, uh, if you need material delivered, if you need your parts moved to the next section, the operator, there's no need for them to leave their machine anymore. So that also increases efficiencies. All of these things <coughs> that you just mentioned, Ryan, are um, in a way real-time responses, real-time reactions to events and processes which are, are, are not happening on the floor. And uh, what is the tool that is primarily being used to, to expose that or to request information or request service from other people? Is it the email process that is built into the uh, 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 handheld terminal at the operator station? Yes, yeah, the email process is the primary function for anybody to call. So supervisor help, QA help, engineering help, tooling help is all called using the email function. And the, the, the receiving guy on that end, what tool does he have to, does he have a, uh, There's a, a an iPhone, iPhone in his pocket? Yeah, that it's, it's, a, it's an email function on a phone. Everybody that needs it, uh, the same with the, the SAW people, everybody has a a phone service with an email function so that they can respond within so many minutes. And, and so, and, and I, I get copied on each of the emails, so if a second email goes out, I know that the person hasn't reacted, so they'll react pretty quick when I go to see them. <laughs> the, um, this is being done with uh, <coughs> our worst, bad way to say it, but our poorest performing handheld terminal, which is yeah. uh, the little black device with a four line by 20 character screen and many buttons on it. Uh, and the fact that you're using that as effectively as you are is uh, is a great um, a great thing to happen. And mm -hmm. if you do move towards the MOP software, um, the operators. Well, let's just the third one. We've we've been trialing that for um, what maybe three four months now. Uh, it is the preferred one. People find it m very user friendly. Uh, it also displays a lot more information there. Uh, but the other handhelds are just as effective once you figure out how to real scroll through the system, <laughs> which I haven't yet. <laughs> but no, it's uh, Memex is our primary tool. It's our primary communication tool. It's what initiates all of our activities throughout the day. Uh, it starts off by a board meeting. So each of the there's a milling section and a lathe section. Each of those have a team meeting at nine o'clock with their team, and they review the reports. So the reports that are uh, typically up there are the OEE reports, the non-conforming reports, and uh, the downtime summary reports. And then they ask and they talk to the operators, what are they running, what are they having issues with, uh, why, was, you know, why is there so much set up here, why is there, was there so many non-conforming made yesterday. Uh, the one real-time trigger that we do use on this is the non-conforming. So if it hits a certain threshold, then we're automatically at the machine right away. So that's, that's been a good tool. Um, and but it drives all of our morning starting activities. And that's an automatic email that goes out based on a threshold that you've set with respect to how many rejects are made in a particular category. We haven't set that. We know the operator is the one that does the call. So once he hits uh, more than three percent of the job in total in the scrap, he automatically calls for the supervisor. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, we have automated all of the reports in the morning, so every morning all of these reports for each of the different cells, which I have four cells, are automatically generated and emailed out to the team leaders and myself and they're printed and posted daily. Another great function is the behind the scenes email, so that the operator doesn't know what's being emailed out. So if the machine sits for 20 minutes, I get a, an email saying, hey, I'm sitting, come, come help me. <laughs> or um, setup's gone too long. Uh, we've been you know, stuck on idle for too long. So those were, those were fantastic tools, especially curbing the night shift behavior, uh, because as soon as I see an email down for 20 minutes and then you know, 15 minutes later, I'm sitting, you know, another 45 minutes later, and down again for another 20 minutes, I call in, you know, and I find out that either there's a tool broken or something's wrong with the job, they don't have the skill level, more than likely they're right on too many breaks. So once you start calling about that, you can curb that behavior pretty quickly and increase your productivity. I think we saw probably about a 20% increase just by installing Memex and being having everybody aware that they are, everything can be accounted for now. So it's been a fantastic tool. It's uh, saved me a lot of man hours and a lot of frustration. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for sharing your story.